sanding and polishing your paint. I'm going to show you how to do it and let's get at it. Howdy folks, Troy with V-Twins, the v 8 I'm on today to do a tutorial on color sanding and polishing your paint. We're going to do this in two segments. We're going to do first segment. It's going to be all about sanding and preparing the panel. I've got some panels behind me. i got a hood and a couple of doors from my Imperial project. The doors you might uh, recognize, they're the same doors that I used for my um, pick and file, how to repair steel panels without using body filler. This is what they look like after they're painted. I think they look pretty good, but um, I like to polish my paint to get rid of all the nibs and uh, little dust spots and any types of imperfection and to remove the orange peel that you get from spraying many layers of paint. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what my panels look like now. Uh, these panels here have just been sprayed. They have not been buffed or sanded or anything. This is straight out of the gun. In the uh, spray booth next door, I have the, the vehicle, the Imperial itself, and uh, that has been sanded and polished out. We'll bring the small camera over and I'm going to show you the surfaces that haven't been buffed or sand sanded and buffed. And I'm going to show you the Imperial that has been sanded and polished. And you can take a look at either one of them. And then we'll get into how to do this. Okay, so here's my hood. I mean, <laughs> I can't say it looks bad. I mean, you can see my reflection and everything. But if I get really, really close to it, I don't know if you can see it. Um, you'll see what we call orange peel. It's kind of a kind of an unevenness of the surface. It's very hard to see. Uh, you'll see it in a brand new car because they're not polished out. Um, but uh, that's really not the look we're looking for. Show cars are polished smooth and that's what we're going to learn how to do today. Here's my doors. I mean, they also, I mean, these look great. I mean, I could take this and, you know, bolt it on a car and send it down the road and a lot of people would be quite happy with it. But I am going to polish this out so it's just perfect like a mirror and I'm going to show you how to do it. All right, so here you can see my Imperial and you can look at this finish and you can see that it's just, it's smooth. It's smooth as glass as you go along. I mean, it's been sanded in a, in a process that I use that I'm gonna teach you. So you get this type of finish. You get a finish that looks like it's a hand rubbed lacquer job, but in fact, it's a modern urethane finish that can withstand a lot of contamination, weather, acid rain, stuff like that. I mean, this gives you an idea of when you look at this panel, how reflective it is. It's like you could see me in the, in the reflection holding the camera pretty much in all of these panels, depending upon the way the lighting is striking it. But the panel is quite reflective. It's mirror-like. And that is the finish that we're looking for. All right, so the first thing I want to do is talk to you a little bit about the sandpapers that we're going to be using and the process that we're going to use. Uh, basically, this is a process of what we call scratch refinement. Scratch refinement. In other words, we're going to scratch it with 1500 grit sandpaper then we're going to scratch it with 2000 grit sandpaper. Then we're going to scratch it with 2500 grit sandpaper. And this progression of finer and finer is going to make our scratches smaller and smaller to the point where we can just take the buffer and some rubbing compound that has grit much like toothpaste does. And we're going to be able to polish the finish so it looks like a mirror. And then, once we do that first step with the polishing, we'll compound it, then we'll polish it several times. Once again, it's a process of scratch refinement. So every time we do a process, the scratch is smaller and smaller until you can't even see it with your eye, with your naked eye anyways. You'd need like a jeweler's lube to look at it and you'd see microscopic scratches, but it doesn't matter. You're not gonna see any scratches in the sun. You're not gonna see any scratches in the shadows. It's gonna look perfect. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. And first thing we're gonna do is we have our panels that have been painted. Now, what I like to do with my urethane paint is the 
best thing you can do, if it's possible, is to let it sit and dry as long as possible. If you can let this stuff sit for at least 30 days, so you know it's fully cured, that's the best thing. Because this clear is, is it's, it's chemically react, reactive. In other words, it's, it's, you have the clear itself, then you have a catalyst or a hardener, it's a chemical reaction, the liquid becomes a solid, but it dries a lot by evaporation. So in other words, it's dry to the touch, but it's not necessarily completely dry for usually about 30 days. So if you wait the 30 days, when you sand it, you have a really nice dry solid surface, you're not gonna have to worry about things like uh, the sandpaper rolling the finish or scratching the finish in a way that you don't want to have happen. What happens when the finish isn't dry, um, you tend to pick up small pieces of the clear and roll it along the surface, which in turn causes scratches and uneven scratches that you are going to have a hard time getting out. So if at all possible, if you can wait 30 days, that's perfect. Um, if you can't wait as long as you can, in other words, don't do it the next day, at least wait a week to two weeks. I would love to see you wait the 30 days because the longer you wait, the better it is. The thing about body work in general is I probably stress this on some of my other videos. Doing body work is a succession of layers built on top of each other. So it's like when you dig a hole in the ground and then you start to fill that hole back in. So you have a hole in the ground, you put some dirt in it, in there, you fill it, you smooth it off, you pat it down, it looks perfect. A week later, it looks sunken. A month later, it looks like you only filled the hole three quarters of the way because it's settled. Body work does the same thing. As you apply layers of primer and paint and everything, it tends to shrink back and pull back on itself. So each process, if you can wait a period of time for all that settling to happen, before you apply your next finish, you're going to have a better result. In other words, what's great about it is if you can wait all that time, when you get to this point, it's all settled out, you sand it and polish it, it's, it's already all shrunk back. It's already all settled. You're not going to have anything that comes back. What you'll see sometimes if you go to car shows um, or if you have a car repaired at a body shop or something, sometimes you pick it up or you look at it when it's first done, it looks great. And then six months or a year later, you're looking at it and you're noticing little like lines or maybe scratch lines or, or maybe depressions or something like that. That's because you had some shrink back that happened since you've had the vehicle. So if you can take your time and do the process over a length of time and allow it to settle, you're going to have much better results. My panels have been sitting. Um, my car sat for three months before I sanded and polished the Imperial. You could see the results that we have there. That doesn't have anything on it as far as any kind of like glossing waxes or anything like that. That's just the surface. So, I mean, it looks pretty much perfect right now. When we doll it all up with some polishes and waxes after it's all done, it's just gonna pop. Uh, these panels behind me, these doors have been done for at least 45 days or so, and the hood and the trunk have been done for probably about three weeks. So by the time I get done doing this video, going through all the sanding and polishing process on the doors, I'll be ready to go ahead and start with the hood and the trunk and complete the car. Let's get into what we need to do this job, okay? So obviously, we're going to need some sandpaper. I like to use basically four grits of sandpaper. Um, 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, and 2,500. I have those over here. I've got, I like to use 3M products for the most part. 3M, you can't go wrong. They make excellent products. So we've got the 02022, which is um, 3M's 1,200 grit sandpaper. Then we move up to the 02. 023 which is 1500 grit sandpaper and then the 2000 is 02044 and the 2500 is 02045 so that comes in these half sheets which is already just kind of 
take it and fold it in a tri-fold like we usually do and do your sanding with those. Now one of the other things that I have come up with that I have found or learned is we have this other paper that um, I found on the internet and I really like. It's called Superflex Wet a Dry Sandpaper. And uh, the thing that's really great about this stuff is that it is it comes in a roll and it's got an adhesive back to it. That adhesive back sticks to all my different sanding blocks. And I just stretch it out, I cut it to the size I want, I can stick it on my block and use it like that, it's great. The adhesive on the back of this is waterproof. So when, when your sanding block and everything you have is wet, this sandpaper, this stickiness still works. So you'll be able to put it on, take it off, it's not like um, your other stick it sandpaper if it gets wet it just falls apart this is a special adhesive that uh, i found was pretty unique and it works really well it's great so the um, superflex sanding paper i'll put links for that and my 3m paper down in the in the um, description section below you'll be able to click on that get whatever you need i also like the sanding blocks that i found which are really cool they're kind of made out of this foam that's um, kind of reminds me of a pool noodle, to be really honest with you, to, for, for lack of a better um, explanation. But these are called soft sanders, and uh, these accept this um, adhesive sandpaper and sticks right to it. They come in all different sizes and all different shapes to get different contours. Like you can see these are curved like this. Um, you've got ones that have this curve to it. You can get on a body line like that. Um, they come really long too. So you can sand a nice flat area in a cross hatch manner or in a back and forth manner. And if you use these types of products throughout this process, you'll eliminate grooves from your hands, your fingers, um, <laughs> your wedding ring, things like that. You don't want to cause imperfections in your panel. You want a nice flat thing. I've also got these flat sanders that I can use like this. These also work very well as a squeegee to remove water from the panel so you can see when you've sanded enough. Um, I also like to have these Zep professional spray bottles. I put my water in these, and then as I do my spraying and sanding, I just spray my water and sand and spray. The thing that's nice about this is you're basically flushing any debris that is on the panel off in, in but on the panel between your paint or your clear, whatever you want to look at, your surface and the sandpaper, you're flushing any debris out of there so you're not going to get any scratches. So you got the uh, Zep spray bottle, um, uh, wipers. Uh, we call them wipers, rags, whatever you want, paper towels. I use the Scott rolls. These fit in my in my dispensers here. You're going to use a lot of these because you're constantly going to be squeegeeing off, wiping the panel down, and looking at it to make sure that you're fully sanded. So you want to have some some wipes like this that, that uh, don't have any contamination. Um, you don't if they're brand new, they're inside this or a dispenser. It, there's no sand. There's no dust. There's nothing. You don't have to worry about hurting your panels. You don't have any silicones or greases or anything that are on any of it so I like to use these you wipe it down when you're done you throw them away you got to clean one every time they're relatively inexpensive um, Scott box of rags I'll put a link for those down there too and then you have you your hands and your eyes those are the most important things so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take and we're gonna work on our door so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the door and I'm going to put it on the bench and we're going to start this sanding process. Okay, so I have my door set up on my bench. One of the things that you have to have is a nice sturdy bench. Make sure that, you know, it's not wobbling around or doing anything crazy. You don't want this thing to fall off of here or have any problems and, you know, using your back at repainting it. So I'm going to zoom in on this 
and I don't know if you can see any of this, but I have like a little nib here, a nib there, a nib there. These are the kind of things that I'm going to be working to remove is little spots of dust here and there that I wanted to get rid of. And um, so now we're going to get, I'm going to get the sandpaper set up and we're going to start sanding this out. Nice and steady. Now I'm going to prepare this and um, based upon the... Um, the surface that I have, I'm only gonna, I'm not gonna use 1200. I am gonna go down to 1500, and I'm gonna use 1500, 2000, and 2500. That's what we're gonna use for this job. So I've got my soft cider here, I got my um, 1500 grit sandpaper, and I have my most giantest pair of scissors I could find, and I cut my sandpaper to size. I remove this backing and I stick it to my sanding block and I curl it around this edge. And now I'm going to set up all my blocks that I'm going to use like this. So I've got 1500 on all the blocks that I'm going to use. So there's my two small blocks. Small block. <laughs> Small blocks are all set up. I got a nice medium sized one here that I'm going to do. I just measure it out, mark it with my thumb, and I cut it off of here. I stick it on here and wrap it around. And as you can see, I have this nice rounded edge along with this nice flat surface. So I have three blocks. I've got my other blocks that I use as a squeegee and my water bucket and we're going to get started. What we're going to work on is I like to work on my panels in sections so I'm going to start at the bottom of this and work this area that's this body line down the bottom edge of this door and I'm going to start with my largest sandpaper my largest sanding block and we're going to sand that out. So um, first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to get our surface wet and we're going to want to get our sandpaper wet. And we're going to want to make sure that we don't have anything on our hands that's going to be rough or abrasive or dirty. So you, believe it or not, you want to have clean hands when you do this. So as you can see, I'm sanding this along. I'm following my body line and sanding this smooth in a what we like to call a crosshatch pattern. In other words, kind of a 45 degree angle is what we're doing. And uh, what that does is you keep varying it. That way there you don't end up with any sanding lines that look like, look like you kind of raked it and it's um, got back and forth lines all over the place. So you keep sanding and you rinse your paper and your surface often and then you continue to sand. Um, how do you know when you are done sanding? You're going to take your squeegee, you're going to wipe this small area and you're going to look at the surface to see what it looks like. It's going to be much like when we did our primer except for we don't put any guide coat on this so you have to actually look at the surface and see if it's sanded smooth. I'm going to use my little block thing here and I'm going to squeegee this down and you'll be able to see where it's sanded enough and where it's not. For the most part this looks pretty good. I got a little bit of a low spot here. I got a little bit of orange peel right in there which I'm not really too worried about. So this here is kind of a rounded edge and I allow my panels to be a little rounded in certain areas, especially on the leading edge of a door. So this leading edge kind of tucks behind my fender so when the sand and dirt comes off the road, it doesn't beat on this front edge of the door. So when I do my body work and all my paint work, I kind of tend to kind of roll this just a little ever so slightly. And when I use my flat block, it definitely shows up. So I want to just sand that edge a little bit. So I'm just going to go along this edge. Whenever you sand on an edge, you want to be ginger. Like you'll watch me, I'm just kind of barely going along with it. I'm going to run my squeegee over it. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to come over here where I have this little orange peel spot. 
going to give this a little bit of sanding. And after you do this a little bit, you're almost going to be able to feel it be smooth when you're ready. Now when you get to this point, whoops, if you happen to drop your, your sanding block on the floor, make sure you use your water and rinse everything off of the sandpaper so you don't bring any grit from the floor onto your panel. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take a little uh, paper towel, I'm going to wipe this area down and get a really good look at it. Went over to my handy dandy dispenser and I've got my paper towel or wiper and wipe this area down. Now I am going to bring the small camera over and you'll be able to see what this looks like here. This part of the sanding is the most important. It's the first time. This is where you'll cut down all of your orange peel. You'll be getting rid of all of your nibs. Everything that's wrong with it will be removed with the course's sandpaper. So um, if you have something that you want to chase out of the panel, you're going to want to do it now because your subsequent 2,000 and 2,500 grit papers are going to be just to make it that much finer and smoother for the buffing process. So I got this looking pretty good. I'm going to bring the small camera over and I will show you uh, the difference between what we have sanded and the transition into what has not been sanded. Okay, so it may be hard to see, but you can see how flat this is now. I have a little bit of a shiny edge right here because it's not sanded. I have also have like this little weird looking spot right here where it's not sanded. I could come in and, and smooth that off, which I will to get rid of that so you can't see that. And then you'll come down here and you'll notice the difference between what's been sanded and what hasn't. You'll notice this little orange peely area right in here. That is telling you you haven't sanded enough. Obviously, you come over here, it's all nice and smooth. I have a little tiny nib right there. I'm going to sand that out. And as I do my sanding, what I will do is, like you can see, this area here is what I have sanded. So I'll, I'll come back, I'll touch this up, and then I'll work on sanding from here to here. And then, subsequently, I'll sand from here to there, and I'll continue to move and overlap my sanding process so I have a nice, even surface. If we were, I wet my paper down, I wet this area, and like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap. So I'm going to go from part of the area that I sanded, and I'm going to bring that back this way and kind of continually work it. As I do, you can kind of feel the sandpaper and how the sandpaper drags against the panel. So initially it will drag a lot and then it'll get to the point where it slides over it pretty easy. That generally means you've sanded enough or it also means that you may have worn your sandpaper out. If you notice that it sands o slides over it pretty easy but you're not having any cutting or any any proper sanding, then you know you're going to have to replace that sheet of paper. So once again, I'm going to take my little squeegee and I'm going to squeegee this area and see where I'm at. Looks pretty good. Rinse my paper, spray this area. I'm going to continually go along like this. And I'm just going to keep working it. I want to stay away from my bottom edge. I want to stay away from this body line. I want to sand up to it, but I want to keep my block flat because I don't want to be focusing on that edge because generally when you paint, what happens is your clear, your paint in general, every coat settles down and it tends to run off of the peaks and into the valleys. So if you have a body sharp body line like this, chances are a lot of your clear has flown off of it into the adjacent areas and it is going to be um, thinner than it is on the rest of the panel. Therefore you want to 
not sand on it so hard, besides the fact that there's really no reason to sand on that ridge because there's probably not going to be any anything on there you really need to get rid of. I noticed a little low spot there. I put a little extra effort into that area and uh, that's looking pretty good. I got a little spot on this back edge kind of like I had up in the front that I want to take care of. So I focus on keeping my block flat and working off towards my edge. I want to do this I'm kind of cheating it more or less because you can't sand 100% flat all the time because if you've done any of this work you'll realize that the panel is not flat in the true sense of the word. All the panels have a little bit of roundness to them. I'm going to catch that area we just uh, saw in the beginning. Make sure I got all that out of there. And yeah, let's have a let's dry this off with my towel. And then we'll have a good look at it and see what our surface looks like. I think it looks pretty darn good. One little spot right there. We'll touch this up right here. I'm not going to chase that. All right. So there it is. So now I've got my first section all done. Now I'm going to continually move up the panel and along. And I will periodically come back on the camera and show you where I'm at until we get this whole panel sanded with the 1500. To do my next magical act, <laughs> my next uh, process, we're going to get rid of all this 1500 that I have on my blocks here. Bing, bang, boom. All this is going to go. Now I'm going to break out my, my 2000 grit paper. And we're going to outfit all these blocks with 2000 grit so we can sand the panel with that. Let's go with that one. So just measure them out. Cut them with my kindergarten scissors. And we'll get them stuck on there. And we'll be good to go with our 2000. Remove 1500 grit scratches, not imperfections. The stick really, really good. And it doesn't matter if the block is wet. When you use the spray bottle, you don't really use that much water. As you can see, I haven't filled that spray bottle. I sanded my entire door, and uh, I still got almost a quarter of a quart. I didn't even—I had like a little bit better than a half a quart of water when I started. So you don't use very much water when you use the spray bottle. Uh, versus if you use a bucket, it tends to. You're dipping in the bucket, you're splashing it all around. I kind of stay away from the bucket method at this point in my life. So now I've got... So seeing how I have the door turned this way right now, I might as well start right here on the top where I was before. And, and I'll just work from right here. So as you can see, I'm using the same sanding technique as I was before, varying my sanding strokes, kind of got a 45 degree angle thing going along with a back and forth, and I'm just going to sand it. Once you do this a little bit, you'll be able to feel it 
when it um, when it's completely sanded, you'd be able to almost feel a difference in the sandpaper on the surface. I'm just going to continually work this back, little by little. The whole one of the whole key things that I like to do with this is to just work a small area at a time. That way there, you're assured to sand it properly and not miss anything. I'm just going to sand this whole front top edge like this. I'm going to continue to work it back. When we get to the top, I'll show you the difference in the scratch pattern. Whole top sanded. I'm going to start with this section here, kind of reversing the same process that I started with. So I'm going to wet this edge, wet my paper, and once again, sand this like this. And what I'll do is I'll dry this after I get it sanded, and I will show you that you'll be able to almost see where I've sanded and where I haven't between the 2000 and the 1500. So I focus on like not going much further than like say right here. Okay. Use the GoPro to show you this difference. Okay, so what I've been working on is this area, this body line area here going down. And if you look at it on this angle, I've sanded to like right about here. And if you look at the scratch pattern, You'll see I got some big scratches. It's kind of irregular, but when I get back over into here, it's quite smooth and quite uniform as compared to this area down here. So I'm just going to continue. I'll sand this whole area here, and then I'll work my way right down. So one of the things I did want did want to mention about this is as you get to the finer sandpaper, you will notice that it doesn't really have the longevity of the coarser paper. So you have to change it more often. It's just the way that it is. You'll notice I didn't really sand this, but I'm squeegeeing it off. It's because I had a little piece of dirt or grit or something on the surface. And uh, I could hear it when I started sanding. And uh, I can still hear it. And flush that off. You get a piece of grit in there and you drag it back and forth. It's going to put a scratch in the panel that's going to be a lot coarser than your 2000 grit. And you don't want that. So one of the other things I guess that you want to do is you want to listen to your sanding and uh, if you hear a scratchy sound stop and rinse. So now I have my entire panel sanded with the 2000 grit paper. And if you can see on the close up camera, this area here, when you catch the light in it from your view, you can see my fluorescent lights. So it's already a reflective surface. So now what we're going to do is we're going to strip those blocks back down again. We're going to re-gear up with 2500 and we're going to have back at it one more time. Go over the whole thing with 2500 and then at that point we'll wipe it all down and give it a really good look over. Make sure we don't have any problems, but we've been doing that as we go along. And um, then we'll be ready to talk about uh, the 
buffing and the compounding and polishing process to bring this thing back to life and be smooth as glass. So stick around. I've got my uh, my sandpaper blocks all re-upped with my 2500 and I'm ready to just go right back at this with the 2500. I did refill my uh, my water bottle, so it's a little low, but I'm going to do the same thing this time as I did the last two times. But once again, now my 2500, all I'm looking to do is sand out the scratches from my 2000, which is going to go... So there we have it. Now I've uh, sanded this entire panel down with the 2500 and it looks mint. I mean, I'm, I looked it over really good. I didn't see any spots that needed to be chased after. Um, it looks great uh, in the, in the close-up camera. You can see how reflective this is already. I mean, standing here looking down, I can see the LED lights in the ceiling in this panel. Uh, when you see it on an angle from that camera, from the small camera, you're going to see the reflection of the lights in here. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty close to being uh, having a shine to it already with just the 2500. So that concludes our process for sanding this and getting it ready. So basically it's let it dry for a while, 30 days if you can and then a succession of wet sanding. Um, 1200 if you have a really rough surface or a lot of dirt in it, I would recommend 1500 if you can. The compounds that I'm going to show you tomorrow, they will take out 1200 grit scratches, um, but it's, it's a lot of work. You have a lot of compounding to do that. So if you can go 1500 on up, you're better off. It, it'll make your buffing much quicker. You'll see it when I do the, uh, the buffing segment of this video. So, so 1200, 1500, 2000, 1500. Um, drop off the 1200 if you can and just go from there. And uh, you should be good to go once you have that. Um, in the links below, you'll see where you can get the sandpaper, the blocks, the spray bottle, the paper towels, everything that I used in this job. Please click on my links below. It helps me and I don't get rich off of it, but it, it helps offset the cost to do these videos. Um, the, this is uh, something that takes a really long time to learn and I'm teaching it to you in a video pretty rapidly. And uh, if you do what I tell you, you will have excellent results. So um, I don't have the buffing video up yet. That I'll do that with using this door will be next. But uh, in the future, you'll be able to go from this video right to the buffing video and do the whole thing. So my name's Troy Kane. I'm with V-Twins to V8s. Thank you for tuning in. Click subscribe and support the channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you and good luck on your project.